My name is Michael Wallace. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Gastrointestinal Endoscopy, and it's my pleasure today to interview Professor Shinji Tanaka from Hiroshima University in Japan. Uh, we're talking to Dr. Tanaka today about his recent paper in gastrointestinal endoscopy titled The Diagnostic Performance of JNET, or the Japanese NBI Expert Team Classification, for differentiation among non-invasive, superficially invasive, and deeply invasive colorectal neoplasia. Professor Tanaka, thank you for coming today. My pleasure. Tell us why you did this study. Yeah. Uh, as you know, there is a nice classification already, uh, but a nice type 2 includes various regions, uh, such as from adenoma, adenoma to invas deep invasive carcinoma. Then uh, we cannot uh, determine the therapeutic strategy in Japan because in Japan, uh, colorectal ESD has been becoming common and uh, we approach uh, to large region. And uh, so benign adenoma uh, is allowed to, reject, to be rejected piecemeal manner. However, uh, carcinoma should be rejected M block. So we have to distinguish uh, benign region and uh, carcinoma. However, NICE type 2 is not indicator for such a situation. So we have to uh, subclassify NICE type 2 using magnifying NBI findings. Also, uh, the purpose of the genetic classification is to unify uh, various Japanese complicated uh, NBI magnifying classification. And then uh, we establish genetic classification uh, uh, with four categories uh, type 1, type 2A, type 2B, type 3. However, type 2B uh, also includes various type of region from benign to SM deep invasive carcinoma. So we tried to uh, subclassify the genetic type 2 into two types. By this, uh, we pick up 80% of regions indicated for endoscopic treatment. So as I understand it, um, the, the Japanese, which have really led the world in the uh, detailed description of polyp surface type, beginning with uh, Professor Kudo, Professor Sano mm -hmm. and the Sano classification, later the NICE classification. Now, uh, as I understand it, the JNET classification is now the most widely accepted classification system for polyps mm -hmm. uh, based on narrowband imaging. Yes. Is that correct? Yes, 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 yes. JNET classification is unified classification uh, of all Japanese uh, NBI classification. So uh, nowadays, uh, all Japanese colonoscopists use JNET classification mm -hmm. as a consensus of NBI classification. And as I understand, within that group, you have the, the uh, very advanced lesions, the JNET type 3, which mm -hmm. often have a, an ulcerated surface or deeply depressed, yeah, yeah. and those need to be treated by surgery. Yes. The type 1s and type 2As can be easily treated with standard polypectomy methods. Yes. But the 2B is the challenge. Some of those can be treated by uh, ESD and EMR methods, but some of those are deeply invasive and should be treated by surgery. So your goal, as I understand, was to further classify those 2B lesions into those that should be treated by surgery versus endoscopic resection. Is, is that correct? Yes, yes. Also here, we have to consider the size. Uh, limitation of EMR is about two centimeter uh, due to size of the snare. Mm -hmm. So less, uh, lesion less than two centimeter, uh, we can uh, reject region and block for most of all region. However, large region, larger than two centimeter, if region is cancer, we have to reject and block. Mm -hmm. 
But if adenoma we can reject by piecemeal EMR, mm -hmm. so detailed examination prior to treatment is very important. So tell us, with that background, tell us the main findings of your study. Were you able to dis, uh, subdivide the type 2B lesions? And did that accurately tell you which ones were deeply invasive and which ones were, were not deeply invasive? We subdivided type 2B into uh, low irregularity and uh, high irregular, severe irregularity. Uh, mild irregularity is type 2B low. Severe irregularity is type 2B high. Mm -hmm. uh, lesion with uh, type 2B low is, uh, uh, is not deep invasive carcinoma, so indicated for endoscopic treatment. Okay. So when you see that slightly irregular surface pattern uh, with the NBI, uh, if it's only slightly irregular, mm -hmm. that would be a 2B low, and you could treat that with endoscopic resection, ESD or EMR if it's a smaller lesion. But if it's a highly irregular 2B, those are the ones that are deeply invasive and should be sent for surgery. Is, is that my, the correct understanding? Almost okay. Almost correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about, um, uh, in, in the JNET classification, in the United States and in many Western countries, we don't have zoom or mm -hmm. magnification endoscopes. Uh, we recently have the near focus endoscopes from Olympus and other similar uh, manufacturers. Is the near focus uh, sufficient to uh, make this classification system? Yes, near focus is enough for use of JNET classification. And um, this is a difficult question for a Western endoscopist. As you know, in the West, we, um, most lesions that are intraepithelial high-grade dysplasia or high-grade neoplasia, or even superficial uh, mucosal invasive cancer, uh, we have treated with uh, piecemeal EMR. Mm. But the superficially submucosally invasive, with just a little bit of submucosal invasion, I think we're in consensus between the West and Japan about ESD. But in this classification, you mostly include high-grade dysplasia and mucosally invasive cancers in the, the, the risk group, the 2B low, yes. which should go for ESD. Do you want to talk a little bit more about those differences between a Japanese approach to a high-grade intraepithelial neoplasia versus the Western approach? Mm. In Japan, uh, we deal with uh, many early-stage cancer, including uh, scanty invasive carcinoma, so we often meet uh, SM shallow invasive carcinoma. So, but we cannot uh, distinguish between uh, severe dysplasia in Japanese, in Japan, uh, intermucosal carcinoma and SM shallow carcinoma. So maybe prevalence of uh, meeting such region is different in US and in Japan. Uh, so, carcinoma arise from mucosal layer, not from submucosal layer. So, there is absolutely intermucosal carcinoma. Mm -hmm. but, so, uh, in other words, severe dysplasia. Mm -hmm. uh, so, severe dysplasia is uh, scientifically in Carcinoma insight. Uh, carcinoma has potential to embed to some causal layer. Mm -hmm. So we have to reject M block to get precise uh, pathologic findings. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, SM shallow region, US is not so many. So Western doctor feel uh, SM shallow invasive carcinoma can be treated piecemeal. Yeah. Well, I think that's correct. When we look at the very large EMR series from the West, from Australia, from the United States, mm -hmm. we see a very low prevalence of submucosally invasive carcinoma. And that may be because the prevalence is truly low. Uh, we also share the concern that when we do a piecemeal resection, our ability to assess the pathology accurately may not be 
uh, perfect, we may be missing some early submucosal invasive carcinoma. We don't know that at mm -hmm. this point. Let me just continue or finish, the, uh, finish our interview about learning the JNET classification. Mm -hmm. If I want to learn it or other American endoscopists or Western endoscopists want to learn this classification, is there a, a training tool? Is there a website where we can learn that? Recently, uh, Olympus established uh, and Atlas website uh, study system. Maybe you can use, uh, this is one way, but most important way to learn is uh, to conduct detailed case discussion with uh, pathologic findings and uh, good instructor. Mm -hmm. uh, many of doctor uh, study uh, lecture with uh, representative cases. Mm, this type of uh, way of study is enough to understand the concept. Mm -hmm. However, uh, to apply uh, knowledge to uh, real practice, we have to do many case uh, study mm -hmm. with uh, pathologic findings. Mm -hmm. In Western country, sometimes case, dis case discussion uh, is performed, but no pathologic findings. Mm -hmm. So if uh, diagnosis is incorrect, uh, most of doctors understand diagnosis is incorrect. But sometimes, even in intramucosal cancer shows desmoplastic reaction because uh, sometimes in, uh, invasive growth intramucosal uh, carcinoma exists. In such a case, diagnosis is correct uh, regardless of the invasion depth. Uh, Japanese diagnostic skill was uh, made by this uh, detailed case discussion with pathologists. I was very impressed with that fact when I travel in Japan and I visit endoscopy units. The interaction, after you do a colonoscopy and remove a, a large polyp, every week there's a case conference and you yes. review the pathology and go back and look at the images again. So you learn that correlation between the pathological uh, degree of invasion and the endoscopic appearance of that. Not only in daily practice, if, uh, recently in Japanese domestic congress, uh, one day, one day, all case discussion with uh, uh, case presenter, uh, discusser, and pathologist. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope, if possible, uh, SGE uh, will uh, put in case discussion uh, session mm -hmm. in Congress. Okay. It's a very, very effective. Suggestion. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you here today, and congratulations again on your paper. Thank you so much.